thing we have to fear is losing our coup. No, no, that'll never do. Come in. Uh, excuse me, where can I find Mr. Zagurski? I'm Zagurski. Here, have a button. Oh, thank you. I have the information you wanted. You must be the pollster. At your service. Now, you wanted me to ask the voters how they were going to vote, right? Right, to take a poll. Right, well, of course, I couldn't ask all the voters how they were going to vote because that would take all month. So I asked a small sample, you know, a percentage of the voters. Which may give us an indication of how all the voters might vote. Exactly. And you'll be glad to know, sir, that according to my poll, you received 90% of the votes. 90%? I don't believe it. I'm going to be the next mayor. <laughs> wait, 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 now, uh... Exactly who did you poll? Well, I had to start somewhere. So, I phoned everybody in town whose last name begins with a Z. You what? Well, it's a very small sample because, you see, sir, there are only 20 people in this town whose last name begins with a Z. And they're all my relatives. Papa Zagurski, Grandma Zagurski, the Zagurski cousins. <laughs> that explains it. Explains what? Well, why are you so popular? Four people told me to send you their love, and one person told me to give you a big kiss. Mom. Do you want it? No, not right now. Well, I guess my sample wasn't very representative of the entire group of voters, because I don't think the town is as crazy about you as your family. Your poll doesn't tell us anything. You're going to have to do another one. You're right, and I'm going to get right on it. Good. So tell me, who are you going to vote for? You can't ask me. <laughs> That's right, because you're you. I'm sorry, Mr. Zagurski. I was just trying to get a head start. <laughs> Bye. Phil, you mean to tell me that the limo couldn't pick me up just because the TV set was broken? Well, I was supposed to be in Hollywood today. Okay, never mind, never mind. I met some neat people here with some interesting jobs. I'll just do some more interviews. Well, just get the car fixed so I can make my next assignment, okay? Talk to you later. Bye. Let's see. I'll follow the sign that says Rangers. Maybe they can show me how to get a bus to Hollywood. Excuse me. You can't be lost. You're a forest ranger, right? Right. I'm Janice Mulherrin. I'm not lost. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Well, hi, Janice. I'm Sybil Sawyer, Hollywood reporter. Tell me, what's so special about this place? Well, we're right here on this group of pine trees, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to determine whether they're ready to be cut or not. Oh, now, how do you figure that out? Well, first of all, we have to determine the distance around the tree. Okay. Now, this tree is three feet, three inches around. I determine the age of the tree using this. And what this does, it, it bores into the tree, and we remove a small piece. And then we can count the growth rings. See, if you look at this core, you can see that each line represents one year of oh. growth. Now, by counting them, you know how old the tree is. And how old is that tree? This tree is about 45 years old. That's really clever, but it must be awfully hard for you to measure the size and age of all these trees. That would be very difficult, but by using the information from a few trees like this one, we can use that to represent the whole group of trees. There's a specific way Janice picks the few trees to represent this whole group, or stand, of pines. She does it the same way every time. First, she walks 333 feet into the stand. She turns in a circle, looking through a clinometer. That's an instrument that helps her choose which trees to study further. When she identifies these trees, she measures them and finds out how old they are. Then, she walks another 333 feet and repeats the process. Doing that three times takes care of a stand of pines this size. The measurements Janice gets from these three small groups give her enough information to estimate the size and age of all the trees in the whole stand. From those figures, Janice can decide whether some of the trees should be cut to thin the forest. Well, by cutting a few down, we are protecting the ones that are left. They'll have more sunlight and more room to grow. We'll grow stronger and healthier. Oh, so what's the verdict with these trees? Will they be cut? It depends on what our information shows. 
But if most of the trees are like this one, three feet and three inches around and 45 years old, yes, I'd recommend that they are cut. So there you have it. Studying a few trees can give you important information about a whole group of trees. Be sure to join me tomorrow when I'll be doing an underwater interview with Jacques Custodian, the keeper of the locks in the Erie Canal. Till then, I'm your Hollywood reporter, Sybil Sawyer, and remember, Broadway is my beat. Bye-bye. Oh, you've just seen 20% of the show. I think I hurt myself. The only thing we have to fear is acid indigestion. No, no, too harsh, maybe. Come in. Mr. Zagurski, I finished the new poll. And? You've got nothing to worry about. 95% of the people I question are going to vote for you. 95%? It's a landslide. That's right. <sighs> da da da. Congratulations, nations, Mr. Mayor, 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 Mayor. Here, <laughs> have a button. <laughs> now, who did you poll this time? Well, I was walking by the post office, so I decided to go in and ask all the people that work there. The post office? Uh-huh. The post office where they mail letters. Is there any other kind of post office? Uh, <clears throat> Did you know that I was a mailman for 15 years? Oh, really? And that the people at the post office are my nearest and dearest friends? <laughs> oh, wow, that explains it. Explains what? Well, when I walked in and mentioned your name, everyone started singing, for he's a jolly good bail over, he's a jolly, you know that song? Uh, okay, once again, your sample isn't very representative of the entire group of voters. Oh. You need to find a random sample, one in which everyone has the same chance of being chosen. You mean I should just talk to people that are going down the street? Or, or, call the name at the top of each page of the telephone book. That way you'll get a better sample. You follow? Got it. Good. Now, I have a speech to write. I'll see you later. Okay, bye. Wait, wait a minute. Wait one minute. How would you finish this sentence? Okay. The only thing we have to fear is... Spiders. Spiders. Not bad. I know they freak me out. Bye. <sighs> Hello. Come in. Where have you two been? I have something waiting here oh, for you. Oh, we were playing with your elephant. Yeah, oh, they're so you? good at checkers. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do is something. This I call my 20 cent trick. I have two dimes right here. Now, let me just show you. If I place the two dimes in there, and it, I call that my 20 cent trick, <laughs> because the dimes change into 20 oh, cents. Oh, wonderful. Now, we're going to do a thing that I call coin mind reading. Uh -oh. I want you to help me out. Da -da -da -da. I want you to remove a few from this group of 20 and put them in your pocket so that I don't know how many there are on the table. Okay. So we'll start with an unknown number of coins for me. Okay. okay. Just put a few away. No okay. Thinking. Now, Here count the number to yourself that are left. Okay. Just to yourself. Don't say it out loud. I don't want to hear it. I know that's hard not to talk for you, Chris. Yeah, that's, that's a real <laughs> challenge for me. Okay. There we go. Yes. All right. Now, I want you to add the digits of the number of coins that there are left. In other words, if whatever the number is, if say it's a 16 or 15 or 14 or 13, add the two digits together and remove that number of coins from the group of coins that there are on the table. And put those pennies in your pocket as well. Okay. Have you done that? We're going to put them away right now? Yes, put them away right they now. They are away. Okay, now, you have a group of coins left on the table. Pick up a few of those coins and hold them in your hand. Any number. Uh, okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you how many there are. Think, just concentrate on the number of coins. You have six coins in your hand. Is that Let's correct? See. Put That's it down right. on the table. Let's see. We <gasps> have one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. I believe that! Yeah. How'd you do that? Oh, Wonderful. that's magic. No, I'll tell you how it was really done. What happened was that when you had 20 coins down there and you removed a few, I mm -hmm. asked you to then add the digits of the remaining number. Correct. The sum of those digits was then removed and will leave nine coins on the table. Because 
If, for instance, you removed 3 from the 20, leaving 17, you then add 1 and 7, or 8, remove that from the 17 coins, it leaves 9. When you then picked up a few coins, I saw how many were left by secretly counting those coins. You had 6, because I saw that there were 3 left on the table, so therefore I knew exactly how many you had. Oh, it will work wow. with any set of that numbers. For instance, if you were to remove 4 coins, Leaving 16 coins, adding the 1 and the 6 would be 7. Subtract 7, then from the total number that would be there would leave 9, and then I always know that you would have a few left in there. You see what I mean? Right. And so it makes it very oh, easy Mr. to... Blackstone. Oh, my goodness, what happened? I think the magic rope got out of hand. Oh, I'm terribly sorry that you're all tied up in your work. <laughs> you know, this is how Harry Houdini got started. <laughs> yeah, the rest of it. Come in. Hey, Mr. Z, I'm back. <laughs> Good to see you. Ah, uh, I see you have a button. Oh, always, always. Now, tell me, did you do a new poll? Yes, I did. And was it a random sample? Yes, it was. I just opened the phone book and put my finger on a number without looking, and I did it 20 times. Now, that's a better sample. Mm. Tell me, uh, what were the results? Uh, you haven't got a prayer. What? Oh, no. Yeah, your history, your dead meat, Mr. Z. Here are the figures. Eighty percent of the people I called are going to vote for your opponent. That's 16. While 15 percent of the people are undecided. That's three people. And five percent of the people I called are going to vote for you. But that's only if it rains that day and she can't go sailing. Oh, and your mother says hi. This is terrible. Well, it, it means I'll just have to work harder, shake more hands, kiss more babies, make more speeches. Ah, uh, I, I wouldn't make any more speeches if I were you, Mr. Z. That last speech was... Well, the people loved it. Um... Well, the ones who stayed to the end, anyway. <coughs> and both of them liked it a lot. Of course, they were my sisters, and one of them went to sleep. Yeah, she's only three. Well, this is terrible. It was a terrible speech. Mm. Well, let me put it this way, Mr. Z. The only thing you have to fear is uh, making, making speeches. speeches. Bye. Here's a way to send secret messages. There are 26 letters in the alphabet. Look, <laughs> what if you number each letter like this? To send a message, just use the numbers instead of the letters. Everybody will think you're crazy except the person you send it to who knows how to figure it out. Undercover kind of guy. Undercover kind of guy. I should be working for the FBI. FBI. I am the neighborhood super spy. Super spy. I can send a secret message that you can't figure out. If you don't have my secret code, you won't know what I'm talking about. It looks like only numbers, but it's a super secret plan. If you don't know my personal code, you'll never understand. Write out the alphabet A to Z, and underneath that you write one, two, three. Instead of writing SPY, write 19, 16, 25. Then when your friend sees the 19, yes. She'd check the code and translate S 
The 16 is P, the 25 is Y. The secret word is S-P-Y. I am the neighborhood super spy. I am an undercover kind of guy. Undercover kind of guy. I should be working for the FBI. Super spy. You don't have to start with the number one. I only want to show you how it's done. As a matter of fact, if one is A, everyone knows it. It's no fun to play. So, for example, you could make the A a 10. When you get to the R, you start with one again. Then spy would start with two. That's great. P is 25 and Y is 8. I am the neighborhood super spy. Super spy. I am an undercover kind of guy. Undercover kind of guy. I should be working for the FBI. FBI. I am the neighborhood super spy. Super spy. Choose a number for the A, any one of many picks. Keep adding one till you get to 26. Start again with one and stop when you see the last of the alphabet, the letter Z. All you need to know is the number for the A. You're ready to send a message away. You can send secret messages to and fro. Just like a real spy, just like a real pro. I am the neighborhood super spy. Super spy. I'm an undercover kind of guy. Undercover kind of guy. I should be working for the FBI. FBI. I am the neighborhood super spy. Super spy. I am the neighborhood super spy. Super spy. I am the neighborhood super spy. Super spy. This just in, not always, but sometimes when you're doing more than one operation, the order you do them in is important. I'd like the order of pizza. It's not funny. Film at 11. Tell the Secretary of the Treasury and the Director of the Budget I want to see them both here in the Oval Office immediately. You want, you to, want see to see me, me Mr. Mr. President? President? Yes, good. What took you so long? I have a top secret, high priority, no peaking problem, and, well, I need you two experts to help me solve it. Glad to help, Mr. President. My lips are sealed, Mr. President. Good. I knew I could count on you both. Experts, here it is. Hello? Hello? Gentlemen, please, please. Experts. Here it is. Well, what do you think? Numerals, Mr. President. Definitely a numerical equation, Mr. President. I knew that. What I need is an answer. Nine. One. What's that? One. Nine. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. One of you says one, the other says nine. Then, well, you both change your answers. Which one is it? Either. Either. There are two answers. With your permission, Mr. President, <clears throat> 10 minus 5 is 5. Mm. Plus four is nine. Mm. Or five plus four equals nine. Ten minus nine equals one. So either answer could be correct. It might help to know what these numbers represent, Mr. President. Well, my wife gave me ten dollars allowance. I thought I'd uh, sneak out of the White House and go to the movies. Now, I figure 
five dollars for the movie plus four dollars for the cab. And what I need to know is how much is going to be left over. Now, did I put the uh, numbers down wrong? You put the numbers down correctly, Mr. President, but you forgot the parentheses. The parentheses? Uh, yes, parentheses tell you what operation to do first. You're going to spend five for the movies plus four for the cab. Five plus four is nine, and ten minus nine equals one. And that is the answer for this particular problem, Mr. President. Mm. Memo for the Pentagon. When in doubt as to which operation to do first, use parentheses. Darn! I was hoping I'd have nine dollars left over. Then I could buy that 20-pound bag of jelly beans. Hard to believe there's only this much of today's show left. How much of it have you already seen? This much, or this much, or this much? This much is the right answer. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names have been made up, but the problems are real. It was 9.43 a.m. We were working on the case of the missing baseball. My partner is George Franklin. The boss is Thad Green. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We decided to look at the last scene from yesterday's show to refresh our memories. Hello, ma'am. This is George Franklin, MathNet. Ma'am, when you went back into the house for your shopping list, did you close the door? You didn't? If the ball was hit then, it must be in the house. Ma'am, we're coming back to see you. We have reason to believe the baseball is in your house. Mind if we look around? Not really, but that's easier said than done. How's that, ma'am? My house has been stolen. Tuesday, 10.22 a.m. We decided to question Mrs. McGregor about her problem. Good morning, ma'am. How are you? I've been better. Wipe your feet and get off my sidewalk. Want to tell us what happened, ma'am? I went over to my sister's house last night to watch the Dodger game. You have a sister living in Cincinnati? On television. I spent the night there, came back this morning, and the house was gone. Did you notice anything unusual yesterday before you left? No, nothing. Well, wait. There was a man. A man? Yes, you know. A man. Deep voice. Has to shave. Yes, ma'am, but where was he? Sitting in a pickup truck across the street, wearing glasses. I didn't think too much about it at the time. There have been a lot of strange ducks around here lately. How's that? Well, for the past six months, people have been pestering me, trying to buy my house, rent it, rent a room. Well, I'm sick of it. I told them I wouldn't rent and I wouldn't sell. That's why I put up all those signs. Guess I missed one, though. How's that, ma'am? Should have put one up that said, do not steal house. 10.49 and a half a.m. We needed more facts, and we needed to figure out what those facts meant. I figure there are three ways to dispose of a house, Kate. Uh-huh, that's about right. They could blow it up? Yeah, but there would be a lot of debris around. Right. Or someone could have dismantled it. it. Takes a long time to dismantle a house, George. So that's out. The third way is to jack it up, put it on a flatbed truck, and haul it away. And if that's how they did it, someone must have seen or heard something. We decided to question the neighbors to see if they saw or heard anything suspicious. Morning, sir. We're MathNet, working on the case of the missing baseball. I wonder if you could help us out. I'm not very good at finding missing baseball. Yes, sir. I found a missing golf ball once. Uh-huh. It was in the weeds. Yes, sir. It was, you know, round. Most of them are. What a day that was. Last night, sir, were you home and did you see or hear anything unusual? Yeah, I was home. I was watching a Dodger game. You live in Cincinnati? No, it was on television. Yes, sir. Did you hear anything suspicious? Like what? Oh, maybe a house being stolen? No, nothing like that. There was one thing, though. Yes, sir. In the 14th inning of the ball game, my TV went on the fritz. You know, couldn't see a picture. How long did that last? Not very long. Dodgers had two men on, nobody out. Next thing I know, the Reds are batting in the last of the 14th. Funny game, baseball. It's a game of inches. Now, if they trucked the house away, the truck would have left tracks. I don't see any. Maybe they put ramps down to cover their tracks. Maybe. Let's get the facts. Ma Hello, ma'am. Any progress? No, ma'am. That baseball is just as missing as it ever was. Mind if we take another look around? Be my guest. Uh-huh. Ever seen these glasses, ma'am? Nope. Oh, wait. They look like the glasses that man I was telling you about was wearing. Deep voice. Shame. That's right. But what would they be doing here? We'll have the boys in the lab run a make on them. Come on, George. Let's roll. Yeah, but... Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
4.43 p.m. George sent the glasses to the lab to check the prescription and to see if they could help us identify the owner while I went back over the facts. Is that the lab? No, it's Martha. She needs more peppers for the meatloaf. You want to stop for dinner tonight, Kate? Maybe. What are you having? I don't know. She didn't say. She just said to stop on the way home for peppers for the meatloaf. Maybe you're having meatloaf. Oh, I doubt it. How's that? It's difficult to make. She's out of peppers. Uh-huh. Let's go over the facts, George, and see if we can make some sense out of them. The ball was lost yesterday. It probably bounced off the sign. Right. Ricocheted over to Mrs. McGregor's porch, probably right through the open door. So it's inside the house. Right. But the house is missing. What does that tell us? Somebody wanted that baseball real bad. What else? We find the house. We got the ball. <sighs> OK. The house wasn't blown up. We know that. Right. It wasn't dismantled either. And we know that it could have been hauled away in a truck. So what does that leave us? What's the only possible answer? I've got it. Good. The house is still there. What's the only other answer? I don't know. Mathnet, Monday. Oh, hello, Howie. No, no luck on the missing ball yet. <sighs> we'll keep in touch. I understand. Howie? Yeah. His dad's due back in three days. If we don't find that missing baseball, yeah. his father's going to turn him inside out. Stymied, Kate. The house with the ball is gone. It's just gone. It couldn't have just flown away. Or could it? It's bologna served the way you, you like, like it. it. Yes, sir, bologna everything. Kate Monday, MathNet. I understand you have an XY313 for rent. Uh-huh. Didn't happen to rent it a couple of nights ago, did you? Uh-huh. Could you tell me who you rented it to? I'm sorry. Could you tell me to whom you rented it? 100% of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting,